Unconventionals. We've been very busy with our fundraiser and we have some news to share with you. Yeah, but first we're going to talk about the state of the coronavirus, COVID-19 in Ecuador. And we wanted to start by letting you know that there's a lot of fake news going around on social media. So the government has created a fake news page on their website. We'll link that in the description. So if you see something on social media, go look for it and make sure it's not fake news before you share it because it's just going around like wildfire. We all and it just causes confusion. Yeah, and gets our hopes up. Yeah. <laughs> I know you got our hopes up and then realized it was completely false. Yeah, that was really disappointing. Yeah. Right now we're over 22,000 confirmed cases here in Ecuador. However, according to the health minister, Juan Carlos Zeballos, he's estimating that over a million people in Ecuador are positive with the coronavirus. Yeah, they just haven't tested nearly enough people to right. know what the actual numbers are. And we know that there are lots of people who have died in, especially in the Guayas province. Mm -hmm. The local authorities there have estimated that about 8,000 people have died there since mid-March. And with the total national death toll of roughly 600, as obviously those numbers are a lot lower than what we're seeing in reality. Right. They just don't have enough test kits and people to mm -hmm. issue the testing. And they weren't testing people who had died. Right. Only people who had come to the hospital with symptoms were getting tested. So the death toll really is only for the people who went to the hospital, got tested, and then, and then died right. after being tested. Exactly. Yeah, he estimates, the health minister estimates that about 80% of Ecuador's population will be infected by November. So that's kind of sobering. So the goal of the quarantine, as he said, and it's, you know, it's pretty much the same worldwide, is it's not to stop the spread of the virus, it's to slow the spread of the virus because... If it spreads too quickly, the hospitals get overwhelmed and more people end up dying. So the death toll spikes. If it occurs more slowly, more people can fit in the hospital and get treated and survive this so that our family and loved ones are here to celebrate Christmas with this. So that's why it's so important to stay Christmas and Hanukkah, sorry, and all the other ones. The holidays. <laughs> the holidays. Because it's why it's so important to stay inside and abide by the quarantine so that we help slow the spread of this and more people will survive it in the long run. Now we're going to talk about the stoplight program and that is going into effect on May 4th. The national protocols still remain in place, but each canton gets to decide if they're going to fall in the red zone, the yellow zone, or the green zone. Yeah, and the red zone, they're going to extend the home delivery and taxi operation hours. I, what did that say? Until 9, 10 p.m. 10 p.m. And then you can still only drive one day per week based on your car or your license plate number. Yep, no driving on Sunday and the curfew hours remain the same. Mm -hmm. And the yellow zone, some of the government offices will be open at 50% staff and same for the private sector, but they're encouraging people to telecommute still mm -hmm. for as long as possible and as much as possible. And the curfew, curfew will be extended from 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. Right now we're still on a 2 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew. Right. And the cars can drive two days per week, except on Sunday. Yes. That's in the yellow zone. And then for the green zone, it's 60% of staff is able to come back to work. Um, again, still encouraging the telecommuting. And you can drive based on your license plate number, whether it's even or odd. And the curfew will start at 9 p.m. and it is until 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. And we, you'll, you'll be able to drive four days per week right. if you're in the green zone. There's some other things in there and other details as well. You still have to follow the protocols. Like you still have to wear your masks all the time. They aren't opening up mm -hmm. the beaches yet or the parks yet. Mm -hmm. There's still no interprovincial travel. The borders are closed. No international mm -hmm. flights. Things like that. Yeah, the social distancing is still a, is still in effect for yes. the foreseeable future. That means no bars or restaurants are going to be open no social gatherings sporting events none of that right for the foreseeable future and a lot of people have asked us when international travel is going to start up again because you guys want to come here move here many of you had plans to move here yes. this month or next month uh, argentina just instituted a travel ban until september 1st ecuador hasn't even started talking about international travel yet but we're expecting it to be in line with argentina and maybe even longer because it's it's worse here ecuador is one of the worst hit countries in the world right now yep so just put that in the back of your mind hopefully it will not be that bad but mm -hmm. i think that's actually pretty realistic yeah. i think that santa elena our area here in alone will be in the red zone because we are we have not peaked yet yeah, they haven't been testing very much in Santa Elena, and we really weren't on the government radar until very recently, but they've got some tests here and realize that a lot of people have it, and a lot of people have been dying from it a lot more than they realized. 
And we're specifically talking about our area, the Mongrel Alto area between mm -hmm. Mongrel Alto and La Entrada, because they were testing in south, like the Salinas, uh, Santa Elena, La Libertad area, but there was no testing in the area we live in at all. Yeah. And so last uh, week, the vice president of Montanita died of with coronavirus symptoms. They didn't have a test for him. But then they did get tested and found out that the president of Montan Montanita tested positive for it. The uh, president here in alone has also tested positive for it. Yeah, those are the Comuna presidents mm -hmm. and vice presidents. Yeah, and according to the kind of unofficial stats, because once again, they haven't been testing people who have died. They think 12 people have died here and alone from mm -hmm. the coronavirus. Uh, five in La Entrada that we featured in multiple of our videos down where Via de los Sueños is located, or I should say up there yeah. north of here and six in Montanita. And La Entrada is a very small community to lose five people already. All right, so now we're gonna shift gears and talk about a, a, a better topic. Yes. How we're feeding, helping feed people. And thanks to all of your generosity and your donations, yeah, we've, you, we've actually been able to feed a lot more people. Yeah, you guys are amazing. We mm -hmm. are so humbled. Thank you so much for all of your support. Yes, we've currently raised over $22,000 to feed the people in this area as well as their fur babies, their dogs mm -hmm. and cats. And that's about 17000 for people and almost 5000 for dogs and cats. The bank fees are $800, to put that in perspective. That would feed 80 people for a week. So the banks have to make sure and get their cut. Yeah, unfortunately, we have not been able to find a workaround. And no, I don't think there is one. There isn't one. they they got to have their money. It is what it is. So we did create a fundraiser page on our website. It's linked on our homepage, and I'll put a link in the description as well. And that shows you, it introduces you to our team and talks mm -hmm. about the project, where the money is going, how much we've distributed and who's received it. We were a little slow off the out of the gate because, well, first of all, we weren't expecting to raise the, no. <laughs> nearly this much money. Not at all. And then secondly, well, PayPal wasn't expecting it either because they locked our account for the first week and wouldn't let us take any of the money out. So we finally, after days, literally six days of working with PayPal, they finally unlocked our account. We've been able for the past week to start distributing funds from it. So far, we've distributed 3,200 for people and 1,400 for uh, cats and dogs in the area. Yes. And we're really excited to announce that Alone has joined forces with Montanita. Yes. So Jenny, who we featured in a couple of our previous videos, uh, and Ariel, who owns the Poco Loco Bar in Montanita, it's a nightclub, they are both leading their respective food drive efforts, and they've joined forces to kind of in, get better pricing on food. Ariel in Montanita has some good... Uh, sources for packaged items yeah like rice right yeah in bulk in bulk yes and jenny has really good deals for fruit and vegetables yeah so it's so awesome that we can all work together as a mm -hmm. team and we're working on getting the best pricing obviously mm -hmm. since we have this money we're able to um, use our buying power and get better deals yeah and we've also ordered some safety suits and safety masks for the volunteers as well mm -hmm. so that when they deliver the food they're a little bit more safe Yes, it's very important. They also have military escorts now to keep mm -hmm. them safe. Yeah, because they were driving around delivering things and people were jumping on their motorcycles and in the truck and trying to get food. It's, hopefully the military escorts will help improve their safety too. Yeah, and they've also gone out into some of the mount, mountain communas that mm -hmm. are east of town that are even more isolated. They've taken food there as well. Yeah, so our, we've been able to ex uh, extend our reach, which is really mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah, so we think based on the current spend rate that we have enough funds in our account right now, we have about $13,000 left, and that will last about four to five weeks. So we obviously need to continue raising money right. because at the end of the four to five weeks, we want to be able to continue supporting Ariel and Jenny and hopefully bring in some of the other communas that are close to here and help them as well. So we're still raising money. And if you're yes. in a financial position to help feed the people and their fur babies in this area, please consider donating. We've got buttons on the very top of our homepage, ameliaandjp.com. I'll put that link in the description too. And if you can afford anything, every little bit helps. $10 feeds one person for a week here. Mm -hmm. And there are literally hundreds, maybe even thousands of people in this area on this stretch of coast that need your help. There are a lot of people that need mm -hmm. help. Yeah, and there's also an option on the PayPal payment page to make it a monthly donation. Several people have already done that and are contributing monthly to help feed people here. So we really, really appreciate you guys and, yeah. and all of your generosity. It's, I mean, the people, when they receive their food packages, some of them cry. They're just, they're just so happy to have food delivered to yes. them. 
And we should mention that the people who have been identified with having the virus, they and their families are self-isolating. And mm -hmm. so we're, the Comuna is bringing food and medical supplies to mm -hmm. them to keep them safe. So everybody's really working together. It's been amazing to experience how everyone has come together during this tragedy. Again, thank you guys so much for your generosity. Yes, thank and you. please share our video on your social feeds, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit. Anywhere that might help raise awareness about our fundraiser and the people here in alone in Montanita and this stretch of coast. So that hopefully we can raise more money and keep feeding them during over the long run. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified on all of our upcoming videos. Yeah, we're going to be keeping you updated about the coronavirus in Ecuador as well as our fundraiser. So yes. be sure and subscribe so you don't miss those videos. And I think that's all we have for this one. We'll see you all in our next video. Ciao. Ciao.